They bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. The revolutionizing Calvin Klein, the trend-setting Tommy Hilfiger, the divine Emmanuel Ungaro, luxurious and stylish Michael Kors, and Roberto Cavalli, who combines romance with extravagance. With his clean, crisp clothing and sexy ad campaigns, Calvin Klein has revolutionized designer denim and underwear and is the master of minimalism. Calvin Klein started his eponymous label in 1968, beginning by solely designing women's coats. After his fashions became increasingly popular, he added a sportswear and women's ready-to-wear collection. He also pioneered the designer jeans craze in the 1970s, introduced his men's underwear line in 1982, and began marketing now classic fragrances like Eternity, Obsession, and Escape. Klein, who has been described the supreme master of minimalism, has won numerous awards throughout his career, starting back in 1973 when he won the Coty Award for three consecutive years. And as his brand became increasingly popular, especially with the success of his underwear and fragrances, he was in 1993 named America's best designer for his minimalist all-American designs. His 1996 collection featured form-fitting suits, while the sportier collection was designed to show off a man's physique. For the spring-summer 1997 collection, Klein kept to his tradition of simplicity and elegance while incorporating new fabrics to accentuate sensuality. Wool chiffon, nylon organza and paper taffeta were among the fabrics Klein used to design his sleeveless dresses with dropped waists and uneven hands. He also relied heavily on layering fabrics in contrasting colors. He closed the spring 1998 collection where he called his 98 fashion intrinsically elegant, naturally unassuming. Klein's inspiration from US sportswear was evident. Sweatpants, sweatshirts, jerseys and warm-up gear were all represented with the addition of zippers, drawstrings and stretch bands. The label over the years has become known for its highly provocative advertisements featuring sometimes scantily clad models and actors. One campaign has even featured dancing models invading New York City's Times Square in what was the first ever live billboard promoting CK1. You're the one, CK1. Calvin Klein. Actress Scarlett Johansson was selected by Calvin Klein in 2004 as one of the most promising stars of her generation. Johansson became the face of Eternity Moment, where she featured in a commercial for the fragrance. The Eternity Moment bottle is a reinterpretation from an earlier Calvin Klein classic, Eternity, first released in 1988. Klein doesn't just have celebrities appearing in his advertising campaigns, he also has them wearing his outfits on the red carpet. Kira Knightley was dressed chicly in Calvin Klein while posing for photographers, and award-winning Hilary Swank looked stunning in her satin chocolate brown gown at the Golden Globes. In 2002, Brazilian-born designer Francisco Costa joined the team, and with Klein's departure, was made the label's creative director. Costa has said that staying true to the classic simplicity of the original Calvin Klein look and brand is still a design priority, but his clothes have appeared to be lighter and more feminine than Klein's in previous years. In 2008, celebrity clients past and present of the famed fashion designer walked the red carpet to pay homage to the man and his self-titled label on its 40th anniversary. Taking part in the festivities was actress Brooke Shields, who famously said, nothing comes between me and my Calvins in a commercial for the fashion giant in 1981. Other celebrities that attended included Halle Berry, Kevin Bacon, Cynthia Nixon, and Vogue's editor-in-chief, Anna Wintour. Actress Naomi Watts praised Klein's timeless ease that has become his signature over the past four decades. With his various clothing lines, perfumes and colognes, Calvin Klein is widely considered one of the most outstanding American fashion designers.
with a worldwide fashion brand that includes men's, women's, children's wear and accessories, Tommy Hilfiger has managed to capture the essence of what the hip, image-savvy want. Hilfiger is an American fashion designer and founder of the Tommy Hilfiger brand. His preppy Americana look has attracted worldwide attention and gained a strong following with some of the world's biggest musicians, particularly the growing hip-hop scene and actors. Born and raised in Elmira, New York, his parents originally planned for him a career in engineering. However, instead of pursuing further education, Hilfiger, at the age of 18, pursued work in retail. He would buy jeans and bell-bottom pants that he would then customize and resell, which eventually led to him opening his own store, which he named The People's Place. It was here, and with no training, he took to designing his own clothes. After some financial difficulties, Hilfiger moved to New York City, where he was offered design positions with Calvin Klein and Perry Ellis. He turned these down with bigger ideas in mind. 1984 saw the introduction of his first collection, a menswear collection under his own name. Not long into his thriving career, Hilfiger was declared as one of the four great American designers for men, together with Perry Ellis, Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren. By the early 1990s, his college boy look and use of the patriotic red, white and blue had found loyal followers and helped create his celebrity following. His sales had also reached $25 million. His menswear collections have become extremely popular and have changed the image of millions of men. 1995 saw Hilfiger named the Menswear Designer of the Year by the Council of Fashion Designers of America. With his growing popularity among young people and rappers, Hilfiger began giving his designs a street look and making them more loose-fitting. However, being a devoted music fan, he welcomed this image. Hilfiger's product lines now include a number of fragrances, as well as Red Label, which is a line of denim-themed products, and a sports line and Hilfiger designs for the home. His 2004 spring collection was all about good times and optimism. His style was described as a combination of preppy style with daring twists, with his collection combining bright colors with whites and juxtaposed prints with patterns. In 2005, Hilfiger launched his 20th anniversary collection and ratcheted up his traditional Americana look by adding sequins to some of the men's designs, but the collection still sported his trademark bold colors and stripes. You know, we are a fresh American brand, and we were fresh from the day we opened the doors in 1985, and we are still fresh. Uh, I don't want to become stale. So it's that passion and that creativity and that drive that, that I think keeps the brand alive. By 2006, Hilfiger had arrived in the French capital of the world, Paris, with the opening of his first store in the French capital. The store stands on one of the city's most fashionable retail streets, Rue Saint-Honoré. Using the staple of his preppy style, the navy blue blazer, Hilfiger, for his 2007 spring collection, created a double-breasted women's version in coarse cotton gabardine that was worn over silky pajamas in navy and white stripes. Hilfiger was also inspired by the 60s and early 70s and had Grace Kelly in mind when he updated the shift dress by accessorizing it with a scarf and two-tone heels. With a fashion label that now also consists of eyewear, swimwear and jewellery, Tommy Hilfiger, over the last 20 years, has captured the American spirit and promoted it around the world through his designs. Known across the world for his beautiful and feminine creations, as well as menswear, accessories and fragrances, Emmanuel Ungaro knows how to make anyone look good. Born and raised in France, but with an Italian heritage, Emmanuel Ungaro learnt a thing or two about fashion from a young age. He was taught to sew by his father and was designing by his mid-twenties at the Spanish house of Cristobal Balenciaga. 
By the mid-60s, Ungaro had launched his own boutique and label in the fashion capital of the world, Paris. He had created his first women's ready-to-wear line by the late 60s, which was then followed by his first menswear collection in the early 70s and a number of fragrances. Having experimented with different fabrics and prints, people would swarm to his boutiques as his precision cut and body skimming outfits would flatter almost any figure. He is a master at what he does and knows how to make a woman sexy and seductive. Ungaro over the years has brought to the catwalk richly embroidered sheer lace gowns and reams of purple, black and white taffeta billowing out from skirts, but also day wear that is suggesting a careless attitude to luxury, which is sure to appeal to young American socialites that have attended his shows. He resurrected the bohemian chic of the 1970s with outfits that piled on clashing patterns and ornate embroidery to dizzying effect, and has given gimmicky touches to his signature clash of printed chiffons, embroidered lace and floral patterns. His shows have also featured glamorous bridal collections with models wearing white pleated bustier dresses worn with a long Chinese-style cape and satin with flowers and parrots. Never losing focus, Ungaro has had continuous success since the beginning of his brilliant career. But in 2001, Ungaro retired from ready to wear to concentrate on haute couture. In 2005, Vincent Dare came aboard, injecting new life into the Emmanuel Ungaro ready to wear collection, respecting the brand while also expressing his own point of view. With form-fitting dresses, Dare also incorporated corsets into dresses, featuring off-the-shoulder flounces and tiered ruffles down the skirt. Norwegian designer Peter Dundas was given the role of artistic director in December 2005. Having previously worked in the design teams for Christian Lacroix and Jean-Paul Gaultier, Dundas debuted with Ungaro in Paris for the 2006 ready-to-wear season. His 2007 collection was inspired by the nightclubbing nightlife, with a color palette of black mixed with neons, reds, electric blue and ultraviolet, also with a sprinkling of metallics with gold and silver sequins, and fabrics ranging from taffeta, silk, velvet and leather. Esteban Cortazar is the fourth designer to be appointed as the head designer of the Emmanuel Ungaro ready-to-wear line since the founder's retirement. Only in his early 20s, he introduced a welcome dash of optimism into the Paris ready-to-wear collection in 2008. The young designer sent out flirty summer dresses in tropical hothouse prints, with the outfits having been influenced by his native city of Cartagena. Taking creative control of Ungaro's two men's labels, Emmanuel Ungaro and Ungaro, is French designer José Levy, who brought with him a decade of experience. For his first collection with the label, he offered a playful collection, sending out formal wear with a twist and beach gear for a tropical vacation. With Ungaro's beautiful haute couture gowns, he's become a favorite with Hollywood celebrities such as Eva Longoria and Cameron Diaz. Longoria graced the red carpet in a navy blue dress, while Diaz arrived to the Oscars in a satin rose-colored gown, complete with roses and a pleated skirt. Emmanuel Ungaro is a master when it comes to designing what people want. He not only makes people look fabulous in his designs, he also knows how to make them feel fabulous in his designs. Having built his brand up to become a major success, American fashion designer Michael Kors has become one of the most influential designers of the last decade. Studying fashion design at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City, Kors had begun designing clothes by the age of 19. By the early 1980s, he had launched his Michael Kors women's wear line, which was being sold in luxury goods department stores Bergdorf Goodman, Neiman Marcus and Saks Fifth Avenue. With his popularity blossoming and success booming, 1997 saw him become the first ever women's ready-to-wear designer and creative director for Celine, the French fashion house, where he designed admired ready-to-wear lines and accessories. He triumphed at turning the house into a major luxury label. 
However, by 2003, Coors had left the French fashion house to focus on his own label, where the year before he had created a complete menswear line after his capsule menswear line of 1997 received praise. His 2004 menswear collection was sleek, with a tailored edge and a G in tones of aqua, seafoam and turquoise. In 2004, Kors launched his Michael, Michael Kors collection that features women's ready-to-wear, swimwear and accessories such as handbags, small leather goods, belts and shoes, as well as menswear, tailored clothing and watches. I think that I'm a very casual guy. Um, I mean, like, I'm really dressed up for me at the show, but I'm like a flip-flop kind of boy. Um, so I, I'm pretty laid back. Um, I think I'm pretty optimistic. Um, and I love simplicity. Um, and this show is sort of very glamorous, but in a very low-key way. It's very Michael Kors. His collections over the years have included everything from gauchos and camouflage with emerging seasonal trends such as tiered skirts, metallics, vests, washed fabrics and higher waists, as well as clothes that were mostly shades of brown, beige and white with touches of black moving away from springtime pastel colours. His runway shows have featured glamorous jersey halter dresses and long dresses covered in shimmering black paillettes. He has even turned fur into a must-have item, going as far as making a mink mini dress. Known for his artistic, classic, elegant and opulent styles, Kors has achieved a great deal throughout his career, winning the Council of Fashion Designers of America Women's Wear Award in 1999, as well as the Award for Men's Wear Design in 2003. Kors also released his first signature fragrance in 2000, and in 2006 was again one of the big winners of the Fifi Awards, which are put on by the Fragrance Foundation and honor the industry's creative achievements. Kors took home honors in the bath and body section. Many celebrities have followed Kors' career and worn his designs to A-list events, such as Laura Linney, who attended the 2008 Oscars in a strapless midnight silk bustle back Kors gown. And Mary J. Blige looked like an elegant star at the Grammy Awards in Kors' nude-colored V-neck beaded gown with a metallic belt. I think, though, if the celebrity is someone who uh, people respond to emotionally, and if a designer plugs into either someone's uh, attitude or their emotions, I think it works. It's, it's much easier than having sort of just this invented name. The designer himself even arrived at the 25th Annual Council of Fashion Designer Awards with actress Deborah Messing, who naturally wore his designed floor-length purple gown. Heidi Klum has appeared in Kors Designs, naturally though, as the two also worked together on the reality television show Project Runway. With his uncomplicated, chic and stylish designs, Michael Kors has become one of the most popular designers in America. Italian designer Roberto Cavalli is synonymous with glam and rock and is known for his use of color and wild designs which throughout the years have been unforgettable. As a well-known fashion designer of modern luxury clothing, Cavalli's use of materials such as leather, denim, silks and feathers has helped him to create an image that's sexy and exotic. He has also been the creator of outfits for many well-known celebrities. My hobby is to design anything, to make something different. I think in the last few years, 20 years, everything I said was designing was a little bit stopping, a little bit boring. I think that we are in a new millennium, we have to create something different. Having grown up in Florence, Italy, Cavalli was surrounded with art and fashion, which helped him to build up his fabulous fashion career that has now spanned a number of decades and given us menswear, womenswear, children's clothing and designs for the home. Cavalli got his start in fashion while still a student specializing in textile print. Having made a series of flower prints on knits, he was noticed by some major hosiery factories in Italy. 
In the 70s, he created a unique printing procedure on leather and began to experiment with patchworks on different materials. His revolutionary style was a hit, and he opened his first boutique in Saint-Tropez in 1972. After a break in the 80s, Cavalli began doing again what he does best and gained even more success with his sandblasted jeans and new looks. And what started as a fad had become a trend. His designs are now sold in over 50 countries and includes everything from menswear, womenswear and the younger line called Just Cavalli, which launched in 1998 and features both men's and women's clothing, accessories, eyewear, watches, perfume, underwear and beachwear. Aimed at a younger market, the Just Cavalli line is still just as extravagant. His 2005 line, for example, included tops that were tight and sexy, and footwear with towering platform sandals. And the multicolored ruffled skirts which appeared throughout the collection, themed the love generation, spoke of innocent fun at the country fair. In 2007, Cavalli unveiled his H&M collection at a star-studded launch at Rome's Salon del Fontaine, where he posed with longtime fans and actresses Halle Berry and Sharon Stone. He's a wonderful designer. He knows how to do chic and sexy at the same time. The collection was built around a selection of Cavalli's favorite pieces throughout the years, of which many are made to wear on the red carpet. Cavalli went all out with a party that was staged to look like a giant VIP lounge where movie stars, fashion superstars and other celebrities celebrated the collection. Looking to his couture collections for inspiration and then creating a more affordable line for the masses, the collection featured high-waisted dark denim jeans, leopard print stilettos, leopard print bustiers, chiffon dresses, trench coats, bras and animal print underwear and was sold out within 30 minutes. Known for his sensual designs worn by many of Hollywood's A-listers, Cavalli has also ventured into a different market with ultra-premium vodka. In 2006, Roberto Cavalli Vodka was the latest addition to the Cavalli lifestyle brand. Heavily favored by the A-list set, Cavalli carefully crafted his show to maximize on-red carpet impact with clinging gowns encrusted in jewels sashayed alongside long metallic dresses. Both Beyonce and Kelly Rowland of Destiny's Child have looked gorgeous in Cavalli's gowns. They both appeared at the 2007 Grammys, Rowland in a gold sequined gown and Beyonce in black. When it comes to dressing sexy, Roberto Cavalli is the man you want designing your outfit. He combines romanticism with oomph to give us some of the most glamorous and flirtatious outfits around.